Hi everyone, it's Grace and welcome back to another video on my channel. So I don't know if you guys remember when I posted a book haul a few weeks ago being like, you know what, I was so good, I was on my best behavior, we've got like four books that I bought in the past like month and a half. So I don't know if you remember that person that was in that video, but <laughs> she's not me, or at least I'm not her because I have failed miserably, but I got a bunch of books out of it. So basically, as some of you may know, I had the wonderful Ben from Overly Average Ben come and visit me, and I will just say that he is like the worst influence on me in terms of buying books. Like, this is definitely not on me. We can all agree that we can blame Ben for 100% of this, I think, right? But anyway, as part of experiencing Canada, we naturally had to go to as many, like, used bookstores that we could find. And we also tossed in a couple of trips to, like, just the bookstore, like, just the new bookstore. But I got some pretty awesome books, so I want to show them to you. Actually, before we get into that, I just realized that two of these books I actually purchased before Ben got here, but um, I'm pretty sure that he can still be blamed for those because that's how this works. But um, I visited my friend Carly um, in Toronto and we visited a used bookstore as well. So on um, that trip with Carly, I picked up uh, The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. I like Ernest Hemingway's prose and his writing style and I've read um, The Sun Also Rises. So when I saw how like little The Old Man and the Sea was, I was like, I could, yeah, I could do that. This could be my next Ernest Hemingway. And then the second one that I got from that trip with Carly was East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which I honestly, I just, I just thought this cover was pretty cool. Like I've heard great things about East of Eden, but I honestly, I don't know a ton about it aside from that it's a classic that I've heard really good things about. I think that it might be a retelling of Genesis, but I'm not religious, so if that is totally off base and totally wrong, then you can just laugh at me in the comments. Now it is time to get into the books that I bought, that I purchased during the 10 day period that Ben was in this country. One thing about me is that I have a legitimately terrible memory for certain things for some reason, so I'm gonna do my best to remember which stores I purchased each of these at, and I'm also going to try and find each of their websites if they have them so that I can link those down in my description. But I'm gonna go through the, the 14 books <laughs> that I purchased in this 10 day span, which is just, it's not good, but it also is amazing at the same time. So the first place that we hit was a little town called Port Perry, which is just a little bit north of my hometown of Oshawa, because we were staying up near there, and they had two really cute used bookstores in Port Perry, and the first one that we went into was Books Galore. And so they sold a combination of new books and used books in there, and the one thing, see I was doing so well at the start, the one thing <laughs> that I picked up from Books galore was a copy of Twelfth Night by Shakespeare because I have a bunch of Shakespeare already but I haven't really gotten to read any of the comedies and I haven't really explored the comedies at all so that was one thing that I was actually looking for because I really enjoy like obviously Shakespeare being as famous as he is there are just like oodles and oodles of copies of his plays and so I really enjoy these little like vintage looking versions of the plays. This is definitely not the type of thing that I would want to buy new. I like to find ones that I think are cute, ones that I like, and pick those up. That was the only thing that I got at the first store. The second store that we went into, also a used bookstore, was Willow Books, also in Port Perry, and I got 
two things there, or at least I'm almost positive <laughs> that I got two things, because the first one is A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare for exactly the same reason that I just talked about. Um, I've always wanted to read A Midsummer Night's Dream, but I never have, and this, this cover is super weird, <laughs> honestly, but this is the one that I'm, I, I honestly can't remember which store I got this at, because like all the used bookstores had copies basically of A Midsummer Night's Dream, so I'm pretty sure I got this at Willow Books, but I genuinely do not remember. But the second book that I am 100% sure that I did buy at Willow Books was the vintage book of Canadian memoirs. I thought that this would be really cool because there are a bunch of like Canadian authors listed here, some that I've heard of, some that I haven't, but I was just looking in the Canadian literature section and I thought that it would be really fun to pick something so that I can explore more about Canada. And I just thought that this book could be a really cool experience and that I could learn a lot about some of these like Canadian authors and the history of Canada through them and through their life experiences. And memoir is always a format that I've liked. And it's been a while since I read one. So um, I'm actually really looking forward to this, even though I don't exactly know when I'm gonna read it. Then the second like location that we hit for used bookstores was Oshawa, because that's where, well, that's where I'm from, that's where I live, but I don't really honestly go out to used bookstores that much. I think I was making the, the mistake of going to thrift stores when I didn't really realize the quality of a used bookstore that I had near me. And so we, we hit a couple of those, and the first one that we went to was called like the Mission Thrift Store. So this that, that was a thrift store, but it did have a really interesting selection of books, so I picked up three from there. And so the three that I got from the first thrift store that we went to in Oshawa were Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, which I have never read John Steinbeck in my life, and I'm realizing now that there are two books by him in this haul, but Of Mice and Men is a tiny little thing, so that's another reason why it just seems like a classic that would be pretty easy for me to get through and I have heard good things about Of Mice and Men. So maybe people just really like John Steinbeck and I never registered that before. The second one that I picked up was China Rich Girlfriend because I read uh, Crazy Rich Asians earlier this year and I just thought it was so much fun, so entertaining. It's basically like Gossip Girl except in a different setting, like that's the type of vibes that you get. And so I did want to continue with it and I just thought like, maybe I didn't have enough motivation to buy the second book new, but when I saw this, I was like, yeah, of course, why not? So I hope that this will be just as entertaining and funny and dramatic as the first one is and it should be a quick and fun read. And then the third book that I picked up from that thrift store was called Water Ghosts by Shauna Yang Ryan. And initially I picked this up, to be honest, because of the cover and the spine, which I just thought were really pretty and it caught my eye. But I am gonna read the inside of this one because this, I believe, is historical fiction. So it says, the mesmerizing story of a community of Chinese immigrants in a small California town in 1928, weaving history and mythology around the lives of the townspeople and the ghosts who haunt them. Locke, California, 1928. Three bedraggled Chinese women suddenly appear out of the mist one small afternoon in a Chinese farming town on the Sacramento River, and their arrival throws the community into confusion. Two of the women are unknown to the townspeople, while the third is the long-lost wife of Richard Fong, the handsome manager of the local gambling parlor, who had left her behind in China many years earlier and had not yet returned for her. Richard's wife's unexpected arrival complicates his life in no small way, not least with two prostitutes at the local brothel he frequents. One, the beautiful young Chloe, depends on him but has eyes for someone else, someone even more forbidden, the local preacher's daughter. The other, Poppy, the psychic madame of the brothel, is desperately in love with him and she begins to sink into despair as he grows further and further away from her. As the lives of the townspeople become inex 
inextricably intertwined with the newly arrived women, Poppy's premonitions begin to foretell a deep unhappiness for all involved. And when a flood threatens the livelihood of the entire town, the frightening power of these mysterious women who arrived in the mist will be revealed. So this sounds, I mean, it sounds really interesting to me, and it is obviously historical fiction, but I really like that it sounds like it has some supernatural elements that could be explored here as well. And I think that's what really motivated me to pick this up, because it just, the whole thing, the whole package just sounds like something that I would have the potential to really enjoy. So I am glad that this caught my eye. The second bookstore that we hit in Oshawa was called New Books, or I'm pretty sure it's new because it's G-N-U and it wouldn't be like GNU. Even though I've said it that way as a joke the whole time, it sounds wrong to say it as new. But anyway, um, this one was a lot more fantasy heavy in the sense that it had other genres, but its fantasy section was, I thought, by far the best of the used bookstores that we went to. And so I will quickly go through the books that I bought. So that is going to be Misery by Stephen King because I love to have these like little old classic looking addiction editions of the Stephen King books. Um, after reading Pet Cemetery in that format, like from a book like this that was published in like 1983, um, I just really like for these specific books to have a copy that looks well-worn. It's just kind of like an aesthetic thing, I guess. I really like it. So, picked up Misery, which will um, hopefully be my second Stephen King. And the second one that I picked up was The Hobbit, um, because while I have read The Hobbit, um, I don't actually own a copy of it. The copy that I read from was at my cottage, which probably means that it just belongs to somebody in my family, and so I read it and then I like stole it for a little bit and then I brought it back to the cottage where it can then stay. So I thought that this was a really cool like older copy as well of The Hobbit. Very very classic looking art style so I thought it was really cute and I picked this one up. And then the last book that I picked up from this new books was not fantasy but I will get back to like the story about their fantasy section. Anyway, um, this one is called From the Ashes and this is by Jesse Thistle and this is a true story. So I'm not sure if this is written as like a memoir. I think it is written as a memoir, but it is about Jesse Thistle's life uh, as an indigenous person and actually you know what I don't want to get the terminology wrong because I'm not 100% sure but this specifically is Jesse Thistle's life of life story of being Métis which is different in Canada we have well again I don't want to get the terminology wrong but we have the Métis we have the Inuit and we have indigenous people so I don't want to like lump the Métis in with the rest of the indigenous peoples because I'm sure that they have entirely different cultures. But um, I've heard really good things about this from my friend Megan and I was excited to get this anyway. Um, I was honestly about to buy this new at the bookstore and then just happened to see it at this used bookstore and it's like it's in perfect condition so I got really excited. <laughs> um, I got the guy to get it out of the pile for me of books that he hadn't even unpacked yet because I was like oh my god no I need to buy that. So I am really interested in reading this. So the reason that I say that this store had such a great fantasy section compared to the others and the reason why it was so funny was because Ben got, well I'm not gonna spoil his book haul, but Ben got a bunch of like Wheel of Time and <laughs> the reason that it's just so funny to me is because the Wheel of Time books, well they're big anyway, but in mass market paperback they are like massive and he took like four or whatever of them off the shelf and it left such a gaping hole in the shelf that the guy who was working there, like we had gone onto another aisle and the guy that's working there is standing over there like back where we had taken the Wheel of Time from and he just yells, he's like, hey did you guys, you're, you're buying some Robert Jordan, huh? And we just look at each other and we're like, yeah? 
is that okay? But like it was, the guy was really nice. The guy working there was really nice. It was just so funny to me because you didn't, you, it's not like taking one book off the shelf and you can't really tell that you took it. It's like you take three or four Wheel of Time books and it leaves like this much space on the shelf. It's like this void that this guy has to then fill. He, has, he probably has to like rearrange the entire shelves in the store just because we took like four Wheel of Time books. Anyway, um, we are getting towards the end of the book haul because the third location that we hit in our travels was Toronto and we went to three spots there. We went to Indigo, which is just like the bookstore, the new bookstore. We went to another place called Arcadia Books and we also went to a place called BMB Books. So the first place that we went to was Indigo and while we were there I picked up Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett because I have um, guards, guards, and men at arms, and Ben and I are actually going to read men at arms together this month. But I did not have Feet of Clay, which is the next book, the third book in the Discworld City Watch series. So I'm just I'm slowly collecting these editions whenever I see them in the store and see like what that particular store has in stock. So when I saw Feet of Clay, I thought, well, that's perfect. I'll pick that one up so that I'll be ready to continue with the series whenever we do so. The next book that I got from Indigo was The Love Hypothesis, which I felt like I hadn't really seen it around, and then I bought it, and now it suddenly seems like everybody's reading it. <laughs> the concept of this book just sounded really adorable. Um, it has like kind of this lab setting, it has a fake dating trope, both of which are things that I love. Um, I'm a big sucker for a fake dating trope. And this is just I, like this is just a contemporary romance that I think is going to be adorable and I'm looking forward to this being a fun read for me. And then finally, you guys should have seen my face when I saw this in the store. That is The Fall of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. And the reason that you should have seen my face was because we went to Toronto on November 4th. And I saw this and I was like that book's not out yet. And Ben's like, are you sure? Like, are you sure that it doesn't have like a different release date in different countries? And he's not wrong. That could be the case. I don't know why Canada would be the first to get it, but that still could be the case. And then I went online and checked and I was like, no, this is supposed to come out on like the 9th and the 11th in like the US and UK. So I don't know why, I don't know why it's here. And it's honestly sort of painful that I can't read this now. I have to read The Hod King first, but I am so excited about this series and when I saw this in the store I was literally like, what the heck? I'm buying this immediately. So yes, I am very excited about this bad boy and I do love like these Orbit books and just the way that they are, like the thick pages, the, the just the style of this. I love them, love the way they feel. Very excited. So the second store that we went to was BMB Books, and um, what I managed to pick up there was this bad boy, which is The Wolf of Orin Yarrow by K.S. Veloso. And so I had heard about this, and I think that Elliot Brooks might be the only person that I've that I remember hearing talk specifically about this book. I've heard other people mention it, but I just remember Elliot liking it, and so I generally like her recommendations, like I generally trust her recommendations. So when I saw this, this is in really good condition as well. And this is like regular $22 Canadian, and so when I saw it for 10, I was like, well, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. So in case you don't know like what this book is about, I am just gonna read the back. Born under the crumbling towers of her kingdom, Queen Talian, or Talian, was the shining jewel and legacy of the bloody War of the Wolves. It nearly tore her nation apart, but her arranged marriage to the son of a rival clan heralds peace. However, he suddenly disappears before their reign can begin, and the kingdom is fractured beyond repair. 
Years later, he sends a mysterious invitation to meet. Talion journeys across the sea in hopes of reconciling their past. An assassination attempt quickly dashes those dreams. Stranded in a land she doesn't know, with no idea whom she can trust, Talion will have to embrace her namesake. A wolf of Oren Yaro is not tamed. So this sounds really fun. Like, I don't know, this just sounds really interesting. It sounds like we're gonna have this really fierce, really strong female main character to follow and she's gonna be in this situation where she needs to be like fierce and desperate and make the best of her situation. And I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see where this goes. And then finally, the last store that we went to was called Acadia Books. I misspoke earlier, it's a Arcadia, not Arcadia. And this was actually a really cool store because it is sort of like, rather than used books, it is used books, but rather than used books, it seems like they focus more on vintage and rare books, and they also have a lot of art in there. So the, it's a really interesting store. It was really cool. It was honestly kind of intimidating when you first went in because I'm like, oh my god, th these books, like it looks like nobody's supposed to even touch them. There were like some really, really cool old leather bound editions of books and things like that. But the only thing that I ended up actually purchasing was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen because this is one of the only Jane Austen novels that I didn't have. Um, I might have them all now. I'm not 100% sure about that. And I really do like Jane Austen, so I am excited to get to this one. I just thought that this was such a cute little like cover. It's a cute format for it. So saw this, thought, why not? I'll add that to my collection since I will be looking to at some point anyway. May as well snag that from a used bookstore and support them, support a smaller store. Now that I have talked for an extraordinarily long time, um, that is it. That is all of the stores that we visited. Again, I'm going to have all of those that I can linked down in the description. And yeah, I got a whole lot of books, but with the number of stores that we went to, I honestly kind of feel like I didn't do that badly. And I also spent less money than I would have had I tried to buy these books new. So I'm happy with my finds and I hope that you found this haul interesting, got a lot of different stuff in here, and I'm excited about these. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content from me. You should also subscribe to Ben, I'll have him linked in the description. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.